Do you think in terms of the West with SJWs, and you talked about last lecture as well, creating chaos when there is none, otherwise it'd be static. Do you think there would be any validity in saying that in a country like Canada where we're pretty gender equal, is there any merit to thinking SJWs are trying to create chaos even when there arguably is none on a mass level? Obviously, there's still problems. Why would they do that? Otherwise, it would be static. And that drive, well, that, it, that's, it wouldn't, but I'm so just So I read this, this, I read this quote once, and I don't, don't remember who, who said it. It might have been Robert Heinlein, for crying out loud, science fiction author. That springs to mind, but it probably, it probably wasn't. And the, the, the proposition was that men tested ideas and that women tested men. And I kind of like that. <laughs> There's something about that, you know. And now, it, obviously, it's an overgeneralization, but we also don't know to what degree women test men surely through provo provocation. It's a lot, because like if you want to test someone, you don't have a like little conversation with them. Like you poke the hell out of them and you say, okay, like I'm gonna like go after you and see where your weak spots are. And it seems to me that this, it seems to me that in this constant protest and use of shame and, and all of that that goes along with this, with this sort of radical movement towards egalitarianism, that there's a tremendous amount of provocation. And God, I'm going to say this too, even though I shouldn't. But, but I don't believe this, but I'm trying to figure it out. You know, I thought it was absolutely comical when Fifty Shades of Grey came out. Eh? That just, I just thought that was just so insanely comical. That at the same time, there's this massive political demand for like, radical equality. And, and, uh, and say, with regards to sexual behavior, and the fastest selling novel the world had ever seen was S&M Domination, right? It's like, oh, well, we know where the unconscious is going with that one, don't we? <laughs> and, and sometimes I think, like, because one of the things that I've really tried to puzzle out, and it's not like I believe this, right? I'm just telling you what I've, where the edges of my thinking have been going, is that you have this crazy alliance between the feminists and the radical Islamists that I just do not get. It's like the feminists, it's like why they aren't protesting nonstop about Saudi Arabia is just completely beyond me. Like, I do not understand it in the least. And I wonder, too, I just wonder bloody well, is, this is the Freud in me, is like, is there an attraction? You know, the, is there an attraction that's emerging among the female radicals for that totalitarian male dominance that they've chased out of the West. And I mean, that's a hell of a thing to think, but I am, after all, I am psychoanalytically minded, and I do think things like that. Because, like, I just can see no rational reason for it. The only other rational reason is that, well, the West needs to fall, and so the enemy of my enemy is... My or, friend, is, yeah. yeah, is Yeah, exactly. Now, what is it? The, the I got that wrong, my, but... The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's and why so Islamists you, tend to vote liberal as well. Yes, well, so that, that could be the case. But I, I'm not going to shake my suspicion about the, this unconscious balancing, because as the demand for egalitarianism and the eradication of masculinity uh, accelerates, there's going to be a longing in the unconscious for the precise opposite for, for, of that, right? The more you, you scream for equality, the more your unconscious is going to admire dominance. And so, well, that's, 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 well, that's how you think if you're psychoanalytically minded. And, you know, I'm a great admirer of Freud. He knew a hell of a lot more than people like to think. And, and so, which is partly why everyone still hates him, even though it's been 100 years since he's, you know, really, really been around.